Girls, they'll just feel like they pop in a little bit. They all look like they're popping. I know, right? Oh, I actually like curling, curling for real now. Oh. You're making so much noise. I am. So, what's all, what else is in the bag? Stop, Jay. I'm recording. Thanks. Grow up. Grow up. Stop. <laughs> are you are you officially finished? I'm officially finished. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> hey y'all, it's hey, <laughs> <laughs> this is ridiculous. You're done for real now. <laughs> hey y'all, it's Ashley at Bookish Realm and I am so sorry that that has been a crappy introduction and a, just overall like Jay is being out of control right now. He's acting like he's a toddler and I can't focus. I just need to focus. That's it. So what I'm going to be doing today is a review of Dread Nation by Justina Ireland. This is a book that I recently finished. I started reading it in December, the beginning of December of last year. And I finished it this past week of January and I have a lot of thoughts. So I'm just going to give you a brief overview of what the book is about and my rating and then I'll tell you when I'm about to go into the spoilery part of the discussion. That way you can just stop watching the video. That way I don't spoil you for it. So if you didn't know, Dread Nation is definitely pitched as a zombie apocalypse meets historical fiction because it takes place right kind of after the Civil War. The Civil War actually never was completed because of the fact that the dead from the Civil War ended up rising up and eating each other and eating people who are not zombies. And now you just have this entire, I guess, infection of zombie disease going around because that's the best way that I know how to describe it. So this book takes place from the perspective of Jane McKean. She is training at this boarding school for black ladies who are trained to become attendants and attendants have the responsibility of protecting white men and white women from the zombies which they called shamblers so we pretty much follow jane in her quest of figuring out some things in regards to these shamblers some things that are going on within her local community it's kind of hard to explain what direction this book is going in because it kind of was all over the place at some points but that is the gist of it it's a host filled with a, a whole bunch of characters um there are also schools for native americans that's kind of briefly touched on but i'll get into that in my spoilery side of this discussion so i ended up giving this book three out of five stars it was a disappointing read it wasn't a horrible read but it was a disappointing read because i expected to go into this book absolutely loving it but there are a couple problems that i had with the book that i really can't explain until i start doing the spoiler discussion so as a matter of fact if you have not read the book and you don't want to be spoiled i do recommend that you turn the video off now if you don't really care or you've already read the book and you're interested in hearing my thoughts and continue to watch because now I'm about to really just dig into what I had a problem with in regards to the way that this book was written. So I'm going to break this review down into three major parts. It's going to be the plot, the characters, and the writing. So starting with the plot, I was really interested in this book because I heard historical fiction Civil War zombies. That's not something that has ever been done before and it is a very unique thing that Justina Ireland has come up with. And because of the things that I have seen in terms of Justina Ireland on Twitter, I know that she's very big on commenting on the current state of society and I figured that this book was going to be filled with a lot of social commentary, especially in regards to the relationship between black and white characters, black and Native American characters, Native American and white characters, relationship between men and women, um, even the relationship between, you know, 
just the black community in general and how that applies to what is going on today. So as you can see, I hope you can see it in the light, um, my social commentary tabs are everything that's in orange. So there was a lot of social commentary in this book. One of the ones that really, really stood out to me, and there's so many different aspects of it, was a section that kind of touched on colorism a little bit with the regard of black women being either dark skin, um, or light skin and that's a huge thing in this book because Jane is of a darker complexion whereas her counterpart Catherine can actually pass for white and she often regards Catherine as being beautiful having beautiful complexion her hair is gorgeous it's just a very interesting dynamic between the two and I think that was just in Ireland trying to touch on the aspects of colorism and how it actually is difficult for both sides um, that it is difficult for dark-skinned women as well as light-skinned women and how we have been kind of socialized to think that as black women the lighter your skin the straighter your ha your hair basically essentially the more European you look the prettier you are so a lot of the community is steering away from that ideal but there still is a lot of controversy and discussion around that so that's just one of the subjects and many subjects that she touched on what I didn't enjoy about the social commentary is that it seems like Justina Ireland would open up an avenue for social commentary and then she wouldn't really tie up the loose ends. So she would start something but then not really finish it. So it kind of just left it out in the open and I wasn't really sure what direction she was going in with some of these things. Like I was interested in her discussion about the relationship between black people, Native Americans, and white people, especially since in this book, black people and Native Americans were sent to similar schools uh, where they were supposed to be trained to fight shamblers, but were introduced to a Native American character in the first half of the book, and then in the second half of the book, he just disappears. And there's no discussion about him or his character or what he's been through and how he fits into this big scheme of this book. So that really, really bothered me. And I'm still thinking like, well, where the hell did he go? Like, was his purpose literally to spy on Jane, kind of double cross her and then send her to the West and then disappear off the face of the earth? It just, it didn't make any sense. So I, I really had a problem with that. Plot wise, I feel like for a book that's about zombies, there were a lot of action scenes regarding zombies it <laughs> there were a few of those scenes but I felt like there could have been more since the shamblers were individuals that um, clearly at the end of the book had to gain the ability to have some type of thought process and we really don't see that much action we see a lot of action in the beginning and a lot of action in the end but not so much in the middle so it was kind of slow in that terms and it's a slow build up and I'm hoping that with the second book we get some of those plot points kind of tied up and some questions answered because it does end on a note where it's not necessarily a cliffhanger but you have questions like okay well at the end of the book you see all these shamblers are starting to come out to this area in the west which I guess if you read the book then you know what I'm talking about Jane is sent to the school for girls and then all of a sudden she gets caught up in the scandal with the governor or the mayor he sends her out west and then we find out that they're building this whole entire like city on a hill type of thing where they feel like black people are meant to serve white people and because we were fighting to break people away from slavery that we disrupted God's order. So as punishment for disrupting God's order, he has decided to turn people into shamblers to make us pay penance for trying to make all of God's creatures equal at the same time. It's really, really twisted and sick, but I can understand where she was going with that idea in a historical sense, but for the most part, like, I'm not sure what the whole purpose of that is because it gets sent out west. The town clearly is being overrun by shamblers continuously and they can't figure out why. And then it's almost like the shamblers develop this thought process and learn how to work together as a team. So that's never really answered. So I'm hoping that all that stuff is talked about in the next book. Fingers crossed, I hope it is. Now, as far as the characters are concerned, I believe that I liked Jane in the beginning of the book, but 
as I moved towards the middle and the end of the book, I started to like her less and less because I felt like she was a really reckless character. I feel like she took a lot of actions which she thought were good intentions and she thought were the best decisions but she didn't think about the collateral damage that it would cause for other characters so for example when they get out west in order to save Catherine because Catherine is she's kind of hard to like in them in the beginning but she grows on you as a character and she's actually my favorite character out of this book I think to protect her Jane made her intentionally pass as white so she set it up to say like I'm I'm black Jack, um, I forget what his name is. I think it's Jackson. I don't, I see. That's awful. The guy that they travel with, um, she, you know, they say that he's black. But when it comes to Catherine, she says that Catherine is white and that she actually serves as Catherine's attendant. And I'm guessing that was a way for her to protect Catherine. But what she didn't take into consideration is because she was trying to protect Catherine, if Catherine would have gotten caught and found out to be black passing for white, things could have gone extremely wrong and they did because they do find out in the end that Catherine is actually black and not white and that she's just passing white and they want to kill her um so I don't know why she did that I don't know why she thought that that was a smart move and she's lucky that it didn't end up in a situation where it could have been much worse than what it was but I thought that was kind of selfish like she didn't give Catherine any choice in passing for white and then towards the end of a book she uses Catherine as bait to draw in the attention of the sheriff and to play on his emotions so Catherine already has a hard time with that because she grew up in a brothel not by her own choice but she grew up in a brothel and come to find out Catherine is actually a romantic and asexual so for her to be put in a position where she has to play being romantically attracted to someone who is romantically and sexually attracted to her is probably extremely uncomfortable so i just didn't i didn't like i really really didn't like that and i felt for Catherine. and as much as i didn't like her in the beginning like i really really grew to enjoy her in the end and just jane just became arrogant and really really i don't know she just arrogant and selfish to be honest with you like I just didn't enjoy her as a person in terms of writing I thought that the book was well written it's accessible it is a long book it's over 400 pages but it is a fairly quick read I just didn't sit down and read it the way I should have which is why it took me so long to finish it but in terms of writing like I said it was good but then I noticed that Justina was not writing for the time period so the way that the characters were written they did not act as though they lived right post civil war so we're talking late uh, 8th, 19th century yeah so late 19th century um they were not handling conducting themselves like that and in one section jane meets another kid that is fighting the shamblers and she asks him a question or something and he responds by saying true that so we all know what the phrase like true that means but that's not a phrase that would have existed in 1890 like that's probably not something that came to be until the 1990s so i'm very confused as to why she thought that that was appropriate for the time period in which she wrote the book so she wrote in and out of her time that she set for her book which was very strange because it was some points that I actually forgot that this book was taking place post Civil War as opposed to the 1990s because that's just the way she wrote her characters that's the way she kind of wrote her setting sometimes and that's the way she had her dialogue structured so that was particularly confusing but overall like it was a decent book I'm not saying that I strongly dislike it even though I just listed out all the criticisms in the world I did enjoy Catherine as a character I think the story the concept behind it is great I love that she has interwoven a lot of social commentary into the structure of this book but I just don't think that it was executed well I think the idea was there but the execution didn't come through which is why I could not give it above a three stars and honestly Catherine really saved <laughs> this book from getting two stars just her character alone was one that I could definitely relate to and then there was a plot twist at the end that I found pretty fascinating regarding Jane's parents that her mother was actually not white but passing white so that was unique and that was interesting but other than that 
like I said before I think in my weekly wrap up this is a book I'll probably check out from the library but I don't know if I will buy the rest of the books in the series and this is an art copy that I got at y'all fest a couple years ago so three out of five stars I hope that the next book does better I will read it I don't know when it's coming out but it will be a copy that I will not be purchasing with my own unless I read it I'm like okay the story gets better but um, a lot of work can be done with this this is a great start to what could be a great series but it's not what I was expecting and I hate to say that it is a disappointing read and I was just hoping for more like even the cover is gorgeous the whole idea behind the book is amazing but just poor execution <laughs> I'm keeping that in there <laughs> All right, y'all, if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more content from me, click the subscribe button. If you're interested in following me on social media, all of my links will be down in the description box. Remember, I upload videos every Sunday, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. If you've read this book, let me know what you think in the comments below, because I've had a lot of people comment on my videos before saying, like, they absolutely enjoyed the book, they loved it, and I think I was like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we all have pretty much similar reading tastes, but it just wasn't for me um so let me know in the comment box what your thoughts were and if you got the same kind of perceptions that i got um from reading the book i love to hear back from y'all as always i hope everyone has a wonderful night